Sean Don coming back at you with part two of how to throw weight like a f***ing boss. In the first episode, we covered the technical aspect of throwing weight far, and in this episode, I wanted to focus more on the actual training aspect of throwing weight far. Uh, and sorry for the very obvious changes in scenery, lighting, and wardrobe, but I filmed the majority of this week's video and last week's video in one sitting, and after editing I realized that it would nearly be 25 minutes long, and I decided to split it up into two parts, and in the second part I decided to add a little bit extra for you guys, so hopefully you enjoy. But anywho, let's get right back into it. Alright, so now that we understand how to throw the weight, we can start taking a look at how to train for it. This section should be much shorter than the technical part because I'm much less dogmatic about actual training. For the most part, it's not about what you do, but rather how you do it. And I'm going to repeat that one more time just for all you guys out there because it's an important concept. It's not about what you do, but rather how you do it. I can give you the best training program in the world, but if you can't complete the drills or throws in that program expressing the previous foundational concepts that I just talked about, then the program is a waste and you're not going to get much better. But when it comes to training the hammer, I think there are three schools of thought generally. I've done all three at some point in my career, so it's just a matter of what fits your situation the best. Don't train it just compete with it. This is what I'm currently doing and what I did my first couple years of college when I thought I was a shot putter. Uh, this can be hard to manage because the feeling of the hammer and the weight are very different. It's kind of like playing Russian roulette on meat day. Sometimes it'll go very well and most times it probably won't. Likely you won't throw your farthest using this method, but it can greatly limit the damage that throwing weight will do to your technique. To execute this kind of strategy, it's pretty straightforward. It's just don't touch it during practice during the week and then pick it up at meets on the weekend and start hucking it. Treat the weight like its own event and throw it exclusively. This is what I did my first year when I decided I wanted to be a hammer thrower. Stupid, right? You might as well sign over your soul to the devil if you do this. Yes, you'll get good at throwing the weight, but at what cost? You're gonna end up sacrificing your entire feeling for the hammer. The year I did this, I had to spend a solid year and a half on f***ing my hammer technique after throwing weight exclusively for five months. Yeah, I put three meters on my throw though, so take that for what it is. This kind of strategy would entail throwing the weight pretty much every day you train with improving your weight throw distance being the primary objective. In this situation, the weight is the end for which your means should be working. Treat the weight as an auxiliary exercise or special strength exercise. This is the best option, in my opinion, for the collegiate athletes out there. And this is what I did my previous two years when I threw my furthest in both hammer and weight. The weight throw is not the hammer, so don't treat it like one, but rather use it as a tool to develop special strength to help out your hammer performance later down the road. This might entail only throwing it a few times a week, or maybe just a few throws after each hammer session during the winter months. It becomes a secondary or tertiary objective in your training plan. The weight is just one of many means to an end, a stepping stone along the way to true success in your primary event. If you have another event as your primary objective, especially hammer, then find the minimum effective dose for your weight throw training. Whether it's five throws each day or five throws once a week outside of competition. The better you get at throwing hammer, the less throws you should need to take with the weight in training to make it go far in competition. Once you decide how you want to train the weight, the rest just becomes a means to an end. There are a hundred different ways to skin a cat. Find what works best for you or your athletes and just stick with it. The use of overweight or long implements like the whammer can take special strength development to a new level and teach patience throughout the turns. While the use of underweight implements challenges rhythm even more, while also teaching the athlete how to relax and let the ball excel at its own pace. The use of different drills like a static start or a finish drill can challenge weak positions or movements, helping an athlete develop faster and teaching them things that they otherwise might not be able to feel in a full throw. As for weight room training for throwing weight far, general strength and power will benefit you most. There are far more people throwing weight far because they're big, strong, or fast rather than technically efficient. If you can, do both. Be big, strong, powerful, fast, and technically efficient. That'll be your best bet. Uh, the best thing I've ever done for my throwing performance in the weight room has been triphasic training without a doubt. In the description box down below, I'll link the triphasic training thrower's manual that myself and Cal Dietz put together. It covers absolutely everything you need to know regarding weight room programming for throwing far, from the annual plan all the way down to the small day-to-day -day details. The basis of the triphasic training system is the emphasis placed on developing the three phases of movement separately, uh, the eccentric, the isometric, and the concentric. Combine this with proper periodization and you can literally transform who you are as an athlete in a matter of months. 
And while, yes, this may seem like a shameless plug, uh, it is an honest, wholehearted endorsement for the Triphasic Training System. The program in the manual is damn near the exact same thing that I followed for the past two years after moving to Minnesota. It does have some minor tweaks made to it to make it a little bit more general for shot put, discus, and javelin in addition to hammer and weight. But yeah, like I said, same concepts. And many of these concepts I still use in my training today. It is quite literally a game changer. And I don't use that term lightly. It changed who I was as an athlete and helped me get to where I am today. Turning me from a 66 meter hammer thrower to a 74 meter hammer thrower and a 21 meter weight thrower to an almost 24 meter weight thrower. And additionally, if you guys are looking for more individualized weight room programming, I do offer online coaching and programming for throwing and lifting. I've yet to set it up through my website, but just email me at sdonnelly757 at gmail.com or slide in my DMs on Instagram and we can work something out. Either way, find yourself a solid weight room program to get you stronger and more explosive, and the weight is going to go farther, especially when you pair it with efficient technique. But how far you throw the weight and how strong you get is not a linear relationship. Keep in mind the law of diminishing returns. The stronger you get, the less transfer the general strength, power, and speed will have on your throwing performances. As you progress in your throwing career and start throwing farther, more emphasis will need to be placed on more specific means of development. And this can mean focusing more on developing your technique and your rhythm to make your throw more efficient, and also using more mindful programming and periodization of specific strength drills and exercises. <laughs> So to conclude with a few more general points, I hope you realize by now that throwing the weight far is a matter of technical efficiency. There are plenty of athletes out there that are big enough, strong enough, and fast enough to throw the weight far, but they lack the technique and feeling to do it. As for the people that think it's possible to still throw weight a lot and maximize their potential in the hammer, I hate to break it to you, but you're not Lance Deal. Yes, he did do both successfully at a high level, but like I said earlier, there are exceptions to every rule, and Lance is an exception, I'd say. Uh, and let's be real, the best hammer throwers will always be able to throw weight far if they want. But the best weight throwers will not always be able to throw hammer far. Just keep that in mind. Throwing the weight should be a means to an end, not an end in itself. So that's all I got for you guys. I know this video wasn't packed with a lot of very specific information regarding training. Uh, so if you guys do have any specific questions about training the weight or the hammer, drop a comment down below and I will be sure to answer them. And maybe you guys can chime in too and kind of offer different opinions on, you know, the different aspects of training. And maybe we can turn it into some sort of uh, weight throw forum, if you will. But as always, please subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up down below. Helps me out. Uh, and if you share the video, you might get shouted out in next week's video or maybe a future video. We'll see. Big thanks to my homie Sam Uderman for sharing last week's video. Much appreciated. Sean Don, peace and out.